You may know Staten Island for the ferry, the accent, or as the birthplace of the Wu-Tang Clan. But for one weekend last summer, it was the home to the best wiffle ball tournament on the planet. Risers, knucklers, curves that would make your head spin, all on display on a collection of Little League fields. Welcome to the Wiffle Ball Championship. Give us the count. Oh, oh, count. It's filthy. All right. Wiffle Ball is, for all practical purposes, a kid's game. With about a decade of pro baseball under my belt, I expected to walk into the best wiffle ball tournament in the country and see something quirky and fun, but not necessarily skilled. The Golden Stick National Championship was where I learned I was dead wrong about wiffle ball. It's, it's Honestly, it's very similar to facing Mariano Rivera, where he throws a ball at you, and you're just like, oh, there's no way that that can curve into the strike zone. And deals. Strike three. I cannot believe that. So you're the commissioner. Yeah, well, I mean, the commissioner, I'm president of the league. We actually don't have a commissioner. Head grounds crew as well. 15th anniversary this year, so I, I think I've done every job at least once. Jesus, these things are just... <laughs> this is actually uh, our best event of the year. The teams played all year, starting in May, to accumulate points to qualify for this event, and now they're here. Their seed's all dictated by what they did in their regular season play, but this is really what matters, the, awesome. the Open. So there'll be a national championship given out tomorrow when, when this all wraps up. So is this the best wiffle ball competition on the planet? I think so. I mean, this is, you see guys from all over the place come to Staten Island of all places. And you know, we all hear it growing up and you know, I have this pitch and I've hit the ball over that house and you hear all the lore, but like the lore comes to a head right here. During early games, the rules are pretty simple. Two strikes, four yeah, balls, and base hits granted based on where the ball lands. Hit the back fence in the air, you've got a triple. Trickle one past the infield and there's a man on first. But base running with ghost runners is fair game, with designated double play areas and runners tagging on deep fly balls. This is everything you wish you had in your backyard. What are some of the finer points of wiffle ball that a lot of people that just like baseball wouldn't quite pick up? You take a great Major League Baseball pitcher, right, who throws a great curve. Ball breaks from 12 and 14 inches. These guys can break the ball four feet, so 48 inches you can, you can break the ball. The pitch I'll be throwing today will be the finger riser change. What you want to do is you want to flick it right off. It's just to slow up the velocity and the timing of the hitter. It's a knuckleball. Anybody who knows baseball knows knuckleball. I usually kind of hold it in between these two and just push. It's odd, it looks funny, but the ball moves. And these guys, if it don't move, they'll hit it out. Pitch I'm uh, about to demonstrate is a knuckle curve. Pitch is a screwball. This is the riser. All right, so I throw a super curve. And it comes across the plate into a righty. The sights and sounds here are incredible. Most of these guys wouldn't be considered to be in athletic shape, but the skill and hand-eye coordination make these competitors athletes. Aces throw untouchable shutouts, and if a pitch hangs in the zone, it's almost guaranteed to be a home run. In the game of wiffle ball, this is as good as it gets. We heard a lot about the high rollers. What do you yeah. got on the high rollers? The high rollers are an emerging team here. Their captain, Dan Haverty, Five or six years ago was this little eight-year-old run came to one of our pro camps. A young team, the high rollers are incredible. We have a reputation for being cocky team, even though we're not, I don't know. People just seem not to like we, us we rub for people, no reason. We rub people the wrong way, I guess. I think people are just hurt that we play with energy and we beat everyone. That's true. We barrel up. Okay. What are we doing? One Me and one Dan will pitch. Me and Dan. Oh. Well, this is a moonshot. Basically, it doesn't come with this. This is just a bike tire. It just gives it just a little bit extra pop and adds some more weight. It just gives you more control. If you look closer, we grade the ball like what I do. I take a cheese grater, I just rub it against it, and I get these nice lines, and it just makes it really rough. It moves a lot more than if you were just had a clean wiffle ball right out of the box. Are we the best? Best in shape team around, like definitely. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> I don't know, my 40 time is just unreal. 
I just love being out there. So I just, I just smile, and then like, people on the other team are like, "What is this kid doing? Why is he smiling?" And then you realize you're playing wiffle ball. So yeah, like, why not smile? Don't matter. Oh. There's no age bracket. There's no weight divisions. There's, there's really. It's everybody's game. That's the beauty of, of wiffle ball. So to contrast the youth of the high rollers, we've got this uh, team of guys born in the 60s that is the screwballs. I mean, they're definitely the oldest collective team here. They look better than all of us. They go, those guys are, uh, they look like they just finished the P90X run. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's do this. Welcome to Uncle Wally's. We do muffins, exclusively muffins. It's a lot of pressure, a lot of responsibility. You know, you have hundreds of people. So when we go out to, uh, you know, play with a ball, that's the one place I, I truly like. Forget about muffins. What's up, Screwball? How are you, bro? Good. Oh, good one, Johnny. There it is. Because of the league, there's always a goal, right? There's always something to look forward to. All right, come on. What do you got, man up first? Let's go. Man up first. We'll be out here at least eight to 10 hours a week. We play softball, we play flag football, we play rack. Nothing is as competitive as wiffle ball because, you know, there's a lot of action. We've been playing it since we're five, you know, so we take it serious. Ah, oh, come on. There's no question we're feeling empowered by the fact that we can be successful, you know, at this age, and, and we keep saying it. We we got it. We got to keep playing. We got to keep practicing because nothing gives us a juice like this. Yeah, there's no doubt. First and foremost, welcome 2016 Yard League National Championships. For the land of the free and the home of the. As the tournament got underway, Lou took us over to his bracket, which looked like something out of a beautiful mind. A crisscrossing round robin leading into what seemed like four different single elimination brackets. It's a lot to look at, but essentially, it's simply four rounds, and the winner is going all the way to the national championship dance. The screwballs knew their game from the beginning. Pitch well enough to keep themselves in the game Brother. and use their power to put some runs on the board. You see a lot of differences in style here. Some of the younger teams, they hit a home run, they run the bases, they're fist pumping the whole nine. When the screwballs hit a home run, they just come right back in. They don't run the bases. Yeah, Rick, get out. Tag. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. After a string of tough losses and just one victory, the Screwballs found themselves right on the bubble of the single elimination round of the tournament. As far as they're concerned, the next game is win and you're in. You guys have the momentum. When you're our age and you're feeling that, it means a lot. We're gonna roll with it, I know it. I know we're in this game. This time, Lou's bracket wasn't kind to the screwballs, and they didn't advance based on a run differential of a single run. We didn't make it. Is that true? Yep. Are you kidding me? That's tough, man. We lost by one run. I'm gonna have to change this text. What was the text? We just won an epic game in extra innings to squeeze our way into the top bracket. We're about to make an historic run. <laughs> <laughs> If you look around, everybody's high-fiving, everybody's smiling, but believe me, like, down dirty, they, like, this is a title that they want to hold. Wait now! Wait. A lot of money involved, and people put their whole year into this, and some of them their whole lives, so when it gets taken from them, they, they, they fight pretty hard. Did you say on, bitch? Yeah, I did. I was talking to my son. Yeah, I know you were. About me. Huh? About me. Yes, I was. 
Chris, just name the place, bud. You know, everybody makes fun. You think it's just wiffle ball, but it's it's a game. It's comp competition, you know. So you're still competing. That's no, good. It's good for us. It keeps us young. The high rollers were natural favorites in this one. Cocky 18-year-olds from Boston that hadn't lost a regional tournament in the better part of three months. Nice job! Nice job! For all they had in skill, it became clear pretty quickly that they didn't know how to deal with early losses. Let's go. No one better. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, That's a great job. The high rollers found themselves in one for the ages with the yum yums. Typical games here are played over four innings, but the teams were locked up 0 0 in the bottom of the eighth. Dan Haverty's famed knuckleball was dancing all over the place. But one mistake here. Get up. Get up. Get up. One time, buddy. And the season was over. You just don't like to lose, you know, but we're that team that like has lost once in the last three weeks, so it's kind of not really a, we don't really know how to lose yet, so we're kind of childish in that regard. All right, everybody, welcome to the 2016 Golden Stick Yard League National Final. It all came down to the seventh floor crew versus the Yum Yums. The winners would take home two grand, but the ultimate prize on the line was wiffle ball glory. Two to one score in the top of the ninth inning. The Yum Yums are up to bat. If they do not score here, the game is over. The Golden Stick Wiffle Ball Tournament is over. The seventh floor crew behind me doused in champagne. They've done it by a score of two to one over the Yum Yums. Very good game. The rain is coming down. It's over. As the rain came down and the crowd was reduced to just the few brave souls who stuck it out, this kind of felt like the perfect way for this tournament to end. The winners might not even tell the folks at work what they did the past weekend and they probably wouldn't get it if they tried. But for now, it's just a few guys drenched in water and champagne, taking incredible joy from a victory no one else could really understand.